Okay, so I don't even know where to begin, but let's just start with Charles Lieber, who um, is a Harvard scientist and a pioneer and inventor in the nanotechnology space. You probably have seen the news articles relating to the charges that are currently being brought against him in conjunction with his work in China uh, and relating to the Wuhan University of Technology. Um, I'm not gonna focus on you know whether he is or is not responsible for the release of the coronavirus. I just want to like draw your attention to his business activities and um, what to me seems like a very interesting uh, affiliation of people that are involved in the work that he does. So in the early 2000s, he, along with a handful of other scientists um, and individuals, formed a company called Nanosys, which was done in order for them to commercialize and exploit their patents and IP that they were working on in the nanotechnology space. Now, this included things such as nanowires, nanotubes, quantum dots, biosensors, um, all working with a variety of materials, whether graphene, carbon, or silicon. So some of the earliest investors in Nanosys were firms such as Harrison Harris, uh, Lux Capital, um, Venrock, which is the Rockefeller VC arm, uh, and InQtel, which is notably the CIA's venture capital fund. Um, by 2007, Charles Lieber decided to pair up with another Harvard scientist called Spencer Farr, and they created a company called Vista Therapeutics. Now, what he did was he basically had um, Nanosys license and provide all of his um, patents and IP to Vista Therapeutics and grant them worldwide exclusive rights to then license that information out. And in exchange, Harvard and Nanosys both received equity in Vista Therapeutics as well as fees and royalties. Now, one of the interesting pieces of IP that Vista Therapeutics was holding was around Charles Lieber's work um, with nanowire field effect transistors that functioned as biosensors allowing for um, continuous and real-time monitoring of biomarkers in the blood and urine. And in 2015, they received a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, for their work with this technology, uh, specifically with um, malarial proteins. Now, these field effect transistors that Charles Lieber was working with utilized something called carbon nanotubes in the technology. Now, you may be asking yourself, like, I don't know what a carbon nanotube is. I don't know where it comes from. I don't care. <laughs> but let me tell you that carbon nanotubes are harvested relatively easily and inexpensively uh, directly from our atmosphere. So a company called Carbon Engineering, based in Canada, has developed uh, what is essentially a huge fan. Um, or vacuum which sucks in uh, just a massive amount of air and is able to harvest and capture the carbon within the air uh, as it reacts with a likely a, a sodium but basically a liquid solution um, and then they sort of heat this and the end result is that you get these carbon nanotubes um, which have a variety of applications in the technology sector. Now carbon engineering from the beginning one of its initial investors was actually Bill Gates not Microsoft, not the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, just Bill Gates. So this is very interesting, right? Because here we have an individual who has recognized that a technology exists that aligns and can solve uh, their sort of identified issues in the climate crisis. Um, you know, he's personally invested in this company, which is has the intention to remove a large amount of carbon from the atmosphere and produce these carbon nanotubes, which are a critical component of um, many applications for nanotechnology, among those being uh, as a field effect transistor or biosensor, which his foundation has also invested in. In, um, basically in an effort to be able to detect viral proteins. Now, um, it's going to get more complicated than this, but I just want to show that, you know, you have to look at what individuals are doing from every angle of every industry in order to see what their uh, overarching vision and intention is. Um, so I just want to leave you with that.